The ladies tell me I'm creepy, but they have to tell me because if they write it down, I don't get it. <laughs> I'm an illiterate pervert. <laughs> Free lunch time. Whoa, well, free lunch. Whoa, well, free lunch. Alex Malinky Dink, we are back. Semi Bow Bow, back in the studs. Back in the studs. Now, back in it. We are calling today. We are actually calling someone today. For a free lunch. Yes. My local, mm. the Gladstone Hotel. I'm proud of you for letting people know you knew, you live near that. Well, actually, there's two, so there is a there's a borderline mystery there. Okay, true, but it's the one in Marrickville. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, Alex. Yeah, sure, it's the one in Marrickville. Oh, people, I live in the inner west. It's alright, bro. People know I live in Chippendale. There you go. See, well, you wait, you wait. I, one day the goal is to get big enough that we can't even say what city we're in. Yeah, dude, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. We're. I think at best we don't get to say like where we frequent. Yeah. But like people, are, what are we just never going to say we live in Sydney? Yeah, that's true. Well, that'd be nice. And keep it a bit of a mystery. Do you see yourself living anywhere? Like, where is your retirement place? It has to be in Australia. Oh, it has to be in Australia. Yeah, Ooh. I'm a nationalist. All right. Well, <laughs> welcome back to Whoa Free Lunch, the only nationalist podcast. Yeah. Well, I just feel like I'll tell you, I only just found out recently that if you're not from here, you can buy property. And I was just like, it, it's the first time I feel like my brain was an adult where I was like, that doesn't sound like it should make sense. No, wait. Oh, yeah, foreign investment. Yada, you yada, get yada. Foreign, well, who are these people? What are they doing? To be honest with you, this country's had a history of foreign investment for 350 years. Has it helped? No. Oh, <laughs> why do we keep doing it? You ever, do you know what? Do you know what Sydney is? China by the beach. And I don't mean in a racial way where you walk and you see lots of Asian people. You do. But that's mm. not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is on a property value level, the most property is owned by Chinese nationalists. Dude, did you know that Husey is a landlord? Yes. Yes, I do. Did you know that? How crazy is that? Of course Bro, he is, mate. <laughs> of insane. course he is. is. It's a comic friend of it. I can't remember who it was that... Uh, maybe you told me about this or someone else. I might have, and because it is a comic friend of ours. But yeah, he found out that Hughesy is his landlord. <laughs> Could you imagine, dude? Have you ever seen like a bigger separation between like the artist and their actual life? Oh yeah, you it's, know what I it's mean. Crazy. Because you just pick, yeah, my kids, they fucking shit. And but he's actually he owns. He's evicting people. Yeah. You know what? I'll tell you what shits me. Lazy tenants. <laughs> Oh, yeah, did that hole in the wall get there by itself, did it, mate? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's, he is the most unrelatable man on earth masquerading as the most relatable man on earth. You, you, don't you guys bloody hate it when you've got to put the land, you've got to put the price of the apartment up because that's in matching with the interest rates? Yeah. My kids, they hate me because I keep evicting people. Like that's really, <laughs> that's what he does in his day. He evicts people. He doesn't. He doesn't <laughs> give them pocket money. They give him rent. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you also, see the land? Could you, dude? Imagine walking out and watching like out of your apartment and seeing fucking Husey like doing up like the balustrade or some shit like that. Yeah, that'd be and, nuts. And just like connecting all the dots and be like, you fucking cunt. He's doing the electrical wiring. He puts it back in his Hilux. Fourth one, I got it for the masked singer. <laughs> they paid me in cars. Husey. <laughs> Dude, are you, do you think you get mad or do you just go like, ah, Husey. Uh, oh, you got us again, uh, Hughes. Oh, Husey, you larrikin. You raised our rent by uh. $600. <laughs> <laughs> I need to afford a fourth swimming pool. <laughs> Gotta keep the miss out happy. <laughs> Fucking Husey is a landlord now. <laughs> and 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 all and all your other heroes are dead. <laughs> like that's <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> Husey becoming a landlord is the glaring reminder that time is unstoppable. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like an absurdist like play? Dude, no, like, this it is sounds like the next big thing for Channel 9. <laughs> landlord Husey. Landlord Husey. Husey does a tax return. Ah, <laughs> oh, so many numbers. <laughs> 69. Just kidding. I'm actually very good at this. Been a landlord for many years. Husey's Rental Inspections. That's oh, a TV show. That's a funny TV show, dude. Yeah. But, it, like, he's a he's a cunt. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, you really ripped the veil off it. Yeah, yeah. You're it's like, not charming. It's not Husey. It's the, the voice is gone. He's just like, 
what the fuck is this? Mm. To like a couple of backpackers be like, we didn't understand. We didn't. You signed the contract. Why do you should have read your contract? Look at the oven. Hey, and he's fucking come here. Like, <laughs> he grabs him by the scum of the neck. Okay, he's like, puts his head, look, look at that. Does that look like a fucking Bond cleaned oven to you, cunt? I need you to know something right now. Like, pulls him in really close. I need you to know something right now. Yeah. You're not getting your fucking bond back. And I cannot under- overstate en- enough how little $2,000 means to me. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'll tell you this, cunt. Husey's about to lose it. <laughs> and then it just cuts to him and he's like, turns out that Sharice and Daniel couldn't afford to stay there anymore. <laughs> and whistles in fucking Greg Fleet. And Miranda, Amanda Keller yeah. are with baseball bats yeah. and they break the, the <laughs> oh knees. Use his rental inspection. And then it's from the angle of the guy that lives there coming home and Husey's having sex with his girlfriend. And he's like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I have an understanding. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, what a, what a horrible man. <laughs> have you watched Lux Listing Sydney? No, but I know what you're talking about. Honestly, bro, it's one of the most entertaining TV shows. It makes you like real estate agents. All right, okay. I tell you what, I give that a crap because although I haven't seen it, I was at a function a little while ago where one of the star real estate agents were there. And I only know that because the woman that invited me to the function was like, oh, we've got so-and-so from The Bachelor. We've got so-and-so from here. You know, yeah. one of those ones we were talking about where I am the litmus test. Yes, Where yes, if I'm yes. here, you guys are fucking losers. Yeah. Um, and then she goes, oh, that's, I, do, I can't remember his name. That's so-and-so from Lux Listings. He's the real estate agent on Lux Listings. Tall or short? Tall. Might be Simon. Might have been Simon. But then I fucked up. Uh, uh, At this point, it was five o'clock shadow. Well kept five o'clock shadow. This sounds like Simon. Okay. Simon has an issue with the very short guy. Uh Uh-huh. You just have to watch it. (laughs) You just have to watch it. It's the greatest TV, bro. Well, I made made a huge PR blunder. What did you do? Because you know know me. After a couple of drinks, sometimes I run my mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like any fucking man. Straight up. Anyway. I'm going to say something about Albania. So that... (laughs) Yeah, I just walk into functions. I have three margaritas and I just go, Luxembourg's not a country. That's right. I have one. I just fucking neck one vodka red bull. I I go, I heard the real number's a lot less than six million. (laughs) And then you walk away. <laughs> I'm just going to drop that hot potato yeah. in this conversation and fucking disappear. Sorry, boys. I have an eight o'clock ruin someone else's night. <laughs> anyway, so I'd, I'd had a few. Uh, they had Negronis on. I'd had two Negronis at this point on an empty stomach. Nice. So I was standing next to the cheese fondue thing. Straight so up. Apparently, that's classy. Let's get cheese. <laughs> Let's get cheese. Let's get cheese. That's again me talking to myself when I'm drunk as fuck next to the fondue thing. I'm just like, just getting cheesy over here with my linky D. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just getting a little <laughs> just, just by myself. <laughs> Ooh, wet cheese. What am Ooh, I? Yeah. The king of England? Yeah, <laughs> people, are, people just refuse to come near the fondue because I'm just fucking lo- so into you it. You're getting your I'm hips like, into yeah, it. I'm just like, cheesy yeah, fondue. Yeah, yeah. It's the cheese. Yeah. Ooh, we love that cheesy shit. You want some cheesy <laughs> shit? This guy's really it, This guy's really into the fondue is a really alarming sentence. <laughs> Straight up. It's like, yeah. Have you guys seen the guys fucking all about the fondue? This guy's... This guy loves the fondue. Well, she walked in, the woman that was hosting this uh, event, she walked in and I was with Ian McCarthy. And uh, as I, and I just go to Ian, I go, shit, motherfucker fondue, damn. damn. Motherfucker. And then that's when she walks in. So that's when she started. Anyway, so she was telling me, I was like, thank you very much for having us, blah, 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 blah. She says, Lux Listings guy. And I didn't even think about it. I just sort of gently put my hand on her shoulder and went, thank God, I thought I was going to be the biggest cunt here. <laughs> Ian fucking laughs. <laughs> and she she did that classic, okay, well, you have a lovely <laughs> oh evening. Oh, <my> <laughs> fuck you. That's where the movie, that credits roll. Just fucking, we are the champions. <laughs> Mate, you should be carried out. <laughs> That was what? How did the guy respond? No, it was a girl. It was a woman. Oh, it was, I thought you said Simon. No, 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 no. He was over there. He wasn't around. Oh, she oh. pointed him out, and I go, oh, "Thank God, I thought it was going to be the oh, biggest." I thought you said here. it to his face. <laughs> oh no, I so should have. I thought you said it to his fucking face. I was like, "Oh my God, Sam, you're Australian of the Year." <laughs> Maybe that should just be the catchphrase every time a real estate agent is in your vicinity. Which, oh, is like, yeah. I'm so glad you're here. I thought I was going to be the, the biggest cunt at this function, dude. That's that's a party favor straight away. Oh yeah. <laughs> a real estate agent. I thought I was going to be the biggest cunt. And then yeah. goes, hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, she did. So she was just like, oh, okay. Well, no, that's, that's what she was like. Uh, 
Okay, well, you enjoy your evening. Go nuts on the food. Oh, you know the get birds. off it, Stephanie. Yeah, come on, Stephanie. It was probably fucking Stephanie or Belinda. Oh, my God. Belinda's not a name. You know when you say a name, mm. you can exactly picture the person. Yeah. I think Belinda is so outside of that as a name, you have no idea. Exactly. What happened to old, good-fashioned names? Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the most popular name in the world right now. So I don't <laughs> You just never meet Muhammad's anymore. Yeah, I, I went to school with Muhammad's. Yeah? Yeah. The Muhammad. The, the guy. His face was blurry the whole oh, time. okay, true, no, fair I, enough. No, I, I went to, I swear to God, I went to primary school with a kid called Muhammad Ali. No shit. Um, and we're like... Float like a butterfly, read like shit. This guy was <laughs> at a fucking third grade reading level. <laughs> <laughs> he was dumb as fuck. <laughs> We were like, dude, you're so dumb. You should just go into boxing, man. This is a stupid <laughs> motherfucker. A beautiful revisionist history tale of this, the origin story of Muhammad Ali. It's just it, all of us at parent-teacher night when his parents walk in and she's wearing the full niqab and us all going, <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> I'm 11. Dude, dude why does your mum's dress go all the way to her hair? <laughs> Get a smaller one. Get a smaller mum, okay? <laughs> No, he was a lovely kid as far as you can be lovely when you're in grade seven. Do you know sure. what I mean? But it was just like, I, I grew up with a couple of Muhammads. There was mm -hmm. also one on our street. And now I don't know a single Muhammad. I don't know any Muhammad. Here's anymore. the one name that comes to my head when I hear the name Muhammad. It yeah. is now Muhammad bin Salam. Do you know who that is? No. It's the guy responsible for beheading and massacring Jamal Khashoggi in Saudi Arabia. Who's that? He was a journalist. They got him into the Saudi Arabian embassy in Turkey because he needed to renew his visa. Uh -huh. And then they chopped him up and carried him out in garbage bags. Holy fuck. It, it was an international incident. And you won't believe it. The Saudi Arabian embassy in Turkey's security cameras stopped working just after he entered of course, the building. He got Epstein. I'm, I, maybe I'm just getting like sick of journalists. This is how it starts. <laughs> Alex, when I see you uh, next, you're going to be dressed in all white with a black ring around your head. Yeah. Going sandals. <laughs> so <Look>. much breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my puppies. Look how they breathe. I reckon there is like a rule, I reckon, though. It's like if you find out, like, honestly, I don't know if we've said this on the podcast before. Tell me if we have. But if there is a journalist, right, captured, mm -hmm. right, from Australia, obviously priority number number one is get that journalist back. Yeah. Right? Yeah, of course. It's like, that is a very important job. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very important job. We love our journalists here. Say there is a ransom period where they go, we'll give you the journalist back for this amount of money. Yes. Right? And in the video, they take the bag off the guy's head and it's a BuzzFeed journalist. Do you just let him kill him? <laughs> like, do you just go like, oh, sorry, the line's are breaking. What, do you, what? <laughs> what did you say? How much did you want? What? I'm really sorry. <laughs> Top 10 reasons why I can't hear you anymore. <laughs> Bye. Top <laughs> ten No, 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 no. Do you just leave him? No. If an ISIS journalist, an ISIS journalist, <laughs> if a BuzzFeed journalist, the ISIS of the written word, <laughs> if a BuzzFeed journalist gets captured mm. by the Chinese government for reporting on the Uyghur people, yes, the Chinese government have the good foresight to be like, we have no idea what happened. Mm -hmm. Like it's actually, it's horrifically smart to be like, we don't know. But then the, 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 the people in the terrorist organizations that pull the bag off the head mm -hmm. and be like, for some reason, pedestrian yeah. sent us Steve. Yeah. And we've captured Steve. He, I think was, it's he was getting some of the Uyghur people to try weird international foods on camera. <laughs> Turns out they don't understand Vegemite. Turns out they love everything because they're starving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think collectively we all go... That's bad. But pedestrian go, let's find another 19-year-old with 10 years experience. No, wait, you think that we wait, you think that we as a public will be like, bring back the pedestrian journalist. Australian citizens across the board. We I go, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very valid. Nah, that is bro. why, that is why when an Australian backpacker with mm. no job on a gap year trying to do his eat, pray, love bullshit dies in Spain because he triple dropped, it makes front page news. Well, I'll tell you what, actually, no, no, I, I'll tell you what happens. I think we go, oh, fine, bring him home. But when you see him out in public, you go, fuck you, dude. Yeah. I think that's, it's like, fine, we don't want to kill him, but bring him back just so we can tell them to their face that they failed. That's the only time I get on my old man's shit and be like, my mm. tax dollars fucking brought you back. 
So you can do, write a quiz on which Harry Potter character are you? I don't know if you can hold a record for the most coward punch man on earth, but like if you got if you got kidnapped by ISIS as a BuzzFeed journalist and you come back, <laughs> dude, isn't it nuts to think that someone does hold that record? <laughs> Someone's like, I've been coward punched six times. Some dude that just keeps copping punches to the back of the head. What if that's a running joke and he never realized that his friend tattooed go fuck yourself on the back <laughs> of his head? Just a perfect painting of uh, Muhammad on the back. <laughs> hey, real quick. Mm. Can I tell you the most searched Google things in, in Australia? <laughs> For 2022? For 2022. Hit me. And hit me with that vape. Yeah, one second. Hold on. Here we go. All right. Google has revealed what Australians search for the most in 2022. Mm-hmm. All right. So number 10, mm-hmm. Betty White. Okay. Curveball straight out of the gate. Right. Did she die this year? I think she, she met. Yeah, she died this okay, year. Okay. All right. Right. So that's number 10. Right. We love Betty White in this country. We do. Cool. Number nine, Olivia Newton-John. I dead as well. Right. N- number eight, Ash Barty. Retired. <gasps> I'm starting to see a theme here. She retired. Dead, yeah, dead, dead, retired. Yep. <laughs> you won't believe number seven. Okay. In the terms of dead, number seven is ashes. Okay. <laughs> All right. We know we're talking about the cricket here, yep. but we've got dead, dead, retired, <laughs> ashes. ashes. That's rough. Oh, well, number six actually doesn't follow the theme because this is maybe the most alive man on the planet. Novak Djokovic. Mm, true. Right. Number six, obviously because of the vaccine stuff and you know how he was, right? Number five, Ukraine. A lot of people dead there. Hold on. We've got retired, retired, dead, ashes, culturally. Maybe it's maybe it's dead, dead, dead. No, no, dead, dead, retired, ashes. Reason why some people might be dead, dead. True. Right? Okay. Number four, Shane Wong. <laughs> dead number three world cup a lot of migrant <laughs> workers <laughs> dead <laughs> number two Australian Open alright well I mean who cares about that but yes you will never guess number one bro alright hold on let me have a punt here I would love you to guess the number one most searched thing in on Google in Australia this year. Okay, so I'm gonna say I'm Let gonna immediately I'm gonna immediately rule out Kanye West. Yep. Um, what else happened? It's not Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Um, it's de- it, okay. So we're gonna rule out some ones that I think would be funny, but I don't think ah, uh, it's not the Arias. I'm not gonna say. You have to guess. All right. Okay. I I don't think it's the Arias, but it might be that. I swear to God, I'll shoot myself in the fucking head if it's Carl Stefanovic. Um. David Kosh child sex scandal. Can I say you were thinking uh, too interesting? <gasps> What's in a meat pie? <laughs> You're cl- getting closer. Not close, but closer. What's a calzone? But it's spelled with a. It's not a question. Ooh. All right, you got to hit me with it. I want to hear it. The number one most searched thing on Google this year in Australia is Wordle. I hate this country. The game world. Fucking hell. I... <laughs> and I'll tell you what, dude. No, no, no. It's not this country. That is a bullshit list that Google released. It has to be. There is no way. We live in Australia. There is no way number one was Wordle. First off, every year, number one is tits. You know that. <laughs> you know it's tits. Firstly, globally, the most searched term number one every year since the dawn of time is tits. Even when it was just a town hall <laughs> guy with pictures, you'd be like, yeah, can I see tits? Since then, it was tits, and it will always be. Yeah. Right? So, already, Wordle is off the charts. Okay. All right. So, they've specifically eliminated tits, which would mean, by process of elimination, they would have gotten rid of every single young boy and every now and then girl who Googles sexy ladies or vagina. Yeah. Just straight up like vagina spelt with a J. Because that's that the is, most searched term in Australia this year <laughs> is vagina, vagina spelled, spelled with a J. J. <laughs> and that is why we don't respect youth. <laughs> that's, because your parents come in and they go like, they look at the Google search history as a child. 
They come in and see their kid looking at vagina with a giant like this. Fuck it, we're moving schools. Yes. They can't, can't even Christ. spell vagina. Dude, if you're going to be a pervert, you have to at least be literate. You've got to be a literate pervert, mate. It's real. There's nothing worse that you can be. And yeah. Look at this. Could you imagine introducing one of the boys like, this is John. He's a fucking illiterate pervert. That's like one of the most disrespectful things you can call someone. The ladies tell me I'm creepy, but they have to tell me because if they write it down, I don't get it. <laughs> I'm an illiterate pervert. <laughs> it's so sad. Because dude, of, dude. No, A24 film. <laughs> oh, dude. The lead in an A24 film is an illiterate, illiterate pervert. pervert. And he can't get over the illiteracy or the pervert level or be able to take responsibility because he can't read any of Jordan Peterson's books. So he's stuck in the same place. An illiterate pervert attempts to find uh, inner peace after he falls in love with a blind woman who can <laughs> read who didn't see him jacking off to her on the train. She, she's she, a blind woman that didn't see him jacking off to her on the train. He's an illiterate pervert. She teaches, this summer. <laughs> she teaches him to read. He jacks off when she can't see him. Yeah. Because that's his thing. Yep. No harm, no foul. They're madly lost. Yep. This summer, come is blind. <laughs> In spelling nasty. <laughs> In the. In, this summer, in. Can I get a definition of horny, please? <laughs> Cuts to him. So horny is spelled with a Y and not an I-E. <laughs> and not just two devil's horn and a smiley face? Love is blind. Yeah. So there's no crime. Oh my God. This summer. <laughs> now we fucked this up. It's just called illiterate pervert. Yeah, it's a Ill illiterate pervert. <laughs> illiterate pervert is going to be the... And it's, illiter it's illiterate pervert in different... Like Those are the sequels. It's like illiterate pervert in France. Illiterate... <laughs> Illiterate pervert in the States. You know what I mean? Like Illiterate pervert road trip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he he's lost. He can't read the fucking signs. <laughs> he's just horny and lost. <laughs> Alex, how many times do I have to keep saying this fucking shit? Where are our mansions by the water, dude? What's I going don't know, on bro. here? We're fucking un unappreciated in our time. We're the Van Goghs. Dude, you and I are going to Edgar... Our starry the night is literate pervert. We're going to Edgar Allan Poe our way out of this. Someone will find this podcast in 30 years, make all our ideas. We'll be on posters. Oh, 30 years. Hold on. How bad do I think it's going to get? Come on, bro. Let's go 110. Have some faith in yourself. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now, just... You heard it here today. Sam's calling it at fucking 48. Dude... Oh, 58. Oh, no, yeah, fair. <laughs> judging, judging by my family history, what I do know is if I make a part 60, it's a straight shot till 85. Smooth sailing? The whole way, across both sides of the family. So you just need to make it to 60. I just need to make it to 60, and then, which is going to be stressful because I'm like, oh, fuck, another 20 years minimum. I can't walk. My hips are fucked. My left arm is a robot arm. Yeah, but you got that neural link so you can still make yourself calm with your brain. Oh, yeah, that's true. You know I've become I mean? one of those old people that get addicted to the pokies, but I'm just addicted to the simulation. Dude, did you see... And here I can bloody walk. Did you... <laughs> the game, Johnny, gives me legs. Spike is 3D. <laughs> <laughs> the game gives me legs, Johnny. <laughs> did you see the Elon Musk announcement of Neuralink? No. Dude, it is wild. He's The entire conference, he's like... We're going to show videos, and he shows videos of a pig that they've put a Neuralink into, mm. and they're making his limbs move. Really? Yeah. It's Is like the a pig it's, dead. It's a video. No, no, no. The pig's alive. But like he's like on the treadmill and they're like, look, now we can stretch his leg if we want. And they press a button and it stretches the leg. That's the neural link working. Well, hold on. What if the pig gets like crazy super smart? Could happen. But dude, I didn't. But then you would just shut it down in the neural link, I feel like. True. You just be like, and now the pig, we're going to make the pig kill himself. That's you, you wait till like the next three to five years. They're going to be like, uh, look at what the pig does. And it's a pig walking in on two legs into a cafe being like, oh, just a flat white, please. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> he just walks in and it's just him putting on like a tie. Yeah. And he just goes to work. Yeah. That's it. And then someone goes like, 
do the thing. And he's like, I'm not. Please don't <laughs> yeah. make me. He's like, come on, on three. Man. One, <laughs> two, three. Oink. <laughs> Does it just be, or is it a little bit terrifying how much now we're at a point where we're like, hey, look what I got a pig to do. Because that's gone from like, hey, look, look what I got a pig to do. And it's them eating all the garbage. Yeah. And now it's them like going for a walk. Yeah. Applying for a job. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up. I was like, and this is also because I do believe that like every time technology makes an advancement, the first thing is a sex thing. It's most mm. widely adopted by the sex thing. You mean the Neuralink is going to make a pig want it? I think Neuralink, the first thing that they're going to do once once farmers can get Neuralink, I guarantee the first time they set it up, they're like, I'm going to see if I can make this pig come with a button. <laughs> like, oh my God. You know what I mean? No, no, no I know what you mean. Because like, tell me, t- no, you go, you go, you go. That's going to replace artificial insemination. You get a pig because when you breed pigs and you breed horses, mm. you tend to do it manually mm. unless you're like, oh, we've got a fucking, what do you call them? Like a bull or whatever and they're horny and go come. Mm-hmm. But there, it's also a lot of it's artificial insemination. But suddenly you get this really ethic, interesting ethical dilemma where it's like, no, the pig's still going to get off. Yeah. But we're going to make that happen. Yeah. You Okay. Yeah. But then, I mean, and that's, I guess, the argument against it, which is like, now you're playing God, brother. Yeah, that's true. Now you're playing God. Yeah, but can I be honest? I reckon people have been saying that since we started watering, I don't know, a crop. Yeah, true, right. Like, the, f- the first guy to figure out, like, a watering can. Yeah. Some dude on the other side was like, wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it only rains when God wants it to rain. Know. You're going to hell. The guy's just watering his plants. Yeah. And now we're like, yeah, of course you water your plants. It doesn't rain all the time. Yeah, that makes sense. You're right. So every technological advancement, where it's like the wheel, it's like, God gave us straight legs. Yeah, <laughs> cars. That was a big argument against cars. Mm. Y'all gave us horses. Yeah, With true. This, I don't believe in this that, at all. It it's too loud. Do you think that with so it, with that theory of every technological advancement, someone tries to find a sex thing first? Was that happening with the wheel? When the wheel happened, did people try fuck it and then realized it could roll? Because the rounder it was, the more it looked like it had heaps of resources. <laughs> is, that, is that the lines you're drawing? Well, I wonder if it's just like it's like I, I wonder if like the first time you see like the smooth edge of a wheel I wonder if you go like I'm going to put my dick on that <laughs> you know what I mean how often do you see something smooth back then? I don't oh, it's a good point I wonder if you go like, I'm going to try fuck the hole you would the absolutely rub up against it you'd rub up against it I remember the wheel. there used to be this kid down the road from me I went to his house and his fridge I was I was like six, <laughs> and his fridge was a six. sexy fridge. Mad, but it had like a feel I'd never felt before. It's got that water in the thing. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh. It was it was just a standard white fridge, but oh. it had such an interesting feel to it. I couldn't mm-hmm. stop scratching their fridge, and then the dad was like, "Let me ask you a question, there, Sam. Did you go home to your house and scratch up your fridge?" Oh my God, Jesus, Derek. I remember being like, "This seems like a bold reaction," but he is right. I have been scratching his fridge for two minutes. Mm. But I was like, I never felt something like that before. Mm-hmm. And I reckon I was this close to rubbing my whole body up against it. Yeah, of course. So if you're a caveman that just figured out the wheel and you see something that's smooth. Mm. Do you, yeah. you know that the um, some of the oldest recording photos and the first ever moving picture, it's all porn. That's the thing. The internet, once it properly started up, first thing that got uploaded was tits. Tits. Very first thing. Mm-hmm. So Neuralink, I guarantee you, it becomes this thing where it's like, all right, Neuralink is like iPhones. Everybody has Neuralink. The first guy to go go home after getting his Neuralink installed, he's like on the way home, he's using the GPS. He's like, oh, yeah. isn't that funny? He's playing music in his brain. He's t- k- telepathically communicating with like taxi drivers going by yeah. and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, this is fun. The second he's at home and there's a moment of silence, he's like, execute cum function. <laughs> And then the Neuralink goes, and he goes, and just drops to the ground because his brain made him come the hardest he could. Yeah. Oh my God. And that's, that is the new era of addicts. Yes. Neuralink gooners. Neuralink gooners. That is a word I've only learned in the last three months. Me too. Gooning. Me too. Gooning, dude. There's people that like their whole thing is jacking off. Gooning is just jacking off, but long distance. 
I don't understand because I'm like long distance. Mm. It's like, you know, sometimes every now and then, sometimes you're like, I'm going to treat myself today. Yeah. It's no one home. I'm going to put it. At no point have I been there for two hours. Do you know what I mean? No, never is it like you fucking J.R.R. Tolkien could direct this wank. (laughs) (laughs) You should never be wanking for the length of a Lord of the Rings film. (laughs) Yeah, That's not, you've got a problem. If you're wanking and you make it to the Twin Towers... Return or Return of the King? Oh, the two towers. Sorry, the two towers. Sorry, you jack off into history. <laughs> no, if you're wanking and you make it to the Return of the King, it's been too long. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's been way too long, dude. Here's what. Here's here, you get this. You get one and one quarter of a Family Guy episode. Yeah, and that's a treat. That's yeah. That's, right. That's when you deserve it. You deserve it. You've and, been working hard, and they're one of the ones where you walk away and you're like, oh. Needed that. Yeah. I'm going to get stuff done today. Exactly. Because it's still eight in the morning. So <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time my flatmates are asleep. Set my alarm. Yeah, but if you're in like a fucking, if you're in a sesh, mm. and it's like a six hour goon sesh. First off, ouch. Yeah. And second off, get a job. <laughs> you should never look up from a wank and go, oh, it's nighttime. <laughs> No, you should not. In fact, it should almost always be nighttime. Yeah. Holy shit, it's snowing outside. You should never have the Scrooge experience of jacking off. What The Scrooge experience of jacking off is looking up, running to a window, opening it, seeing a boy in the town square and going, you boy, what year is it? That's yeah. the Scrooge experience of jacking off. That should never happen. It should never happen. You should also not have a compulsion to speak to a young boy just after you've come. Yeah, I try not to. Unless you vaccinate. I don't want to go for number two that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you boy, what year is it? And leave, I need time to recover. Yeah, Get you out. boy, what? How, no, it's like, you boy, what year is it? And he goes, 1952, sir. And he's like, so that makes you 18 or? <laughs> well. Yes. Alex, as we said, today we're going to be calling the Gladstone Hotel mm-hmm. my local. Now, it's important you know about this, the Gladstone mm-hmm. Hotel. When I first started going there, mm-hmm. they had this old Greek chef, and mm-hmm. he made one of the best palmies I've ever had in my entire fucking life. Fucking A, dude. He left to go back to Greece. All right. He's then. clearly listened <laughs> to my grandparents. He went home. And he's making palmies in Greece. He's now. making palmies in the big Australia in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> That's Greece. <laughs> Do Greece is just Australia heaven? <laughs> Hot chips, cheap beer, great beaches. Like Australia. <laughs> when Australians die, they go to the big grease in the sky. <laughs> Dude, you're so right. Dude, beer over there is like three bucks. And the food's great. Hot chips and everything. No one wants to work. Like it's <laughs> it's it's fantastic. Dude, that is <laughs> Dude, I can get that a. That is one of the most astute points I've ever heard in my entire life. Imagine walking down the street in Australia and someone offers you a Gordon Tallis mm. Marone's State of Origin jersey for four dollars. Yeah. Oh my god. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh that my god, is, that's you, heaven. You would be like, this is heaven. Yeah. What's your name? What's your name? Angel. It's like <laughs> Theo. This is my son who I instructed <laughs> to get murdered. That's Stavros. Yeah. <laughs> and then just like. <laughs> Like fly back in the sky. He's like, oh my God, I saw angels. Yeah. They came down from heaven. They sold me a $4 Broncos jersey. <laughs> Dude, it doesn't even bloody rain here. Euros just falls from the sky. Euros meat. You just take your bread outside and you open it up to the earth. <laughs> Greek heaven, Dude. Dude, if Saint Peter at if Saint Peter in Greek heaven doesn't check your sins. He just sees if you're forklift certified. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'm missing the card, bro. He's like, come on, man, I left it at home. He's like, Bullshit, you left it at home. Hell. Well, you don't have a forklift certification. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Sorry, but uh, what else have you got here for me, Petra? What have you got? <laughs> what do you got, huh? I was a concreter. Mate, you should have been here fucking 20 years ago. Get in. (laughs) We love you. Hey, you know what? Up here, you get to live your dream. You go to work for two hours a day. You spend the next six just talking to your mates, drinking cappuccinos. Get in here. Greek heaven, bro. 
<laughs> and guess what? Best part? Your wife's a bitch in here too. <laughs> so you've got something to talk about <laughs> with the boys. <laughs> Australia heaven is just being Greek. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, because Europe is an older country. Yeah. So they have the way of life, I think, that we will eventually develop to, mm. which is clocking off at like 9.30 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and then playing chess in the park with boys and wife beaters. Yeah. Just be like, yeah, no, the horse goes mix the little L. You got to play the horse just straight forward. You have to make it the L. <laughs> Do you see the new mal- uh, the new roundabout they, s- they put on Molson <laughs> Avenue? Do you see the new roundabout? I fucking hate it. <laughs> Did you know you could tell when it's not a Greek concrete or when it's not even a proper circle? <laughs> you know what I mean? Bro, should we call the fucking... Yeah, let's call the Glaston <laughs> Hotel. <laughs> We're like leaning back in our chairs and shit. All right. Like okay. we don't have a job to do. We don't. All right. Sorry. We do have a job to do. All right. Now I'm going to change my voice slightly <laughs> because they I'm a regular here. All right. Do oh, please go full Korean. Give me a can I grab your vape? Yes, of course you can. I'll change my voice too. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, how you going? Uh, my name's Sam from the Free Lunch podcast. I'm here with my uh, co-anchor Alex Malinkovic. We were just wondering if it's possible <laughs> if we might be able to grab a free lunch for the benefit of the podcast. Uh, probably not, mate. That's real disappointing. Oh, no, he... <coughs> Sorry, mate. I've heard you've done good food. That's all right, mate. Don't worry. Oh, about no, it. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. It's, it's <laughs> Sam <laughs> and Alex Malikovic. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Hey, I didn't have a problem with you changing your you voice. so lucky. I, I fucking figured out the vibe and changed my perfect Scottish accent. I'll level with you. <laughs> Can I be completely honest with you? No. That was very accidental. I'm so sorry. That's why I started laughing when you said it. Because I was like, oh, fuck. That's, that's <laughs> null and void. The, the worst cunt. You were so lucky. I know because he lives in Marrickville that he can't spell Malinkovich. You were so lucky, dude. Oh, uh, yeah. When you answer going like, yeah, how can I help you? I'm like, he doesn't know how to. He's going he's gonna to get intimidated by the second L. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was insane how cool First off, by the way, credit to him for giving us the quickest no In our 10 episodes That's a good point That was a very quick no He meant business, he hung up on us Yep, I appreciate that This is why I go to that place It is a really good pub mm. With really good staff With really good food And the beers are cheap And they do tinny specials How are the palmies now though? They suck Yeah, they're not very good they That's suck. not their strength The other food's great The palmies well, But the Greek guy went to go the, Make the bigger he palm. died. He made the bigger palmy in the sky. He made the big palmy in the sky. Yeah. God damn. God's, God should be so lucky. Bro, let's just say goodbye. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Tell all your friends this was Woe Free Lunch. Another unsuccessful episode. <laughs> <laughs> Love you as always. God did. God did. Free lunch, baby. Yeah. Boy. <laughs>